Today I'm going to show you how I made this delicious, moist, tender, yummy, juicy prime rib that I served to the police and fire departments last week. If you haven't seen that video, by the way, don't worry, I'll put a link at the end of this video so you can watch that one next. Right now I'm just going to take the outer layer, the silver skin off of the prime rib. So this piece here, the chain, a lot of people cut off. I think this is good meat and since we're cooking on the rotisserie, I think it's going to do well. So I'm going to leave it on. So because we're going to cook this on the rotisserie, our first step is going to be to truss this. I'm going to start by coming under one side and I'm going to tie the butcher's or pitmaster's knot. I'm going to come over once, I'm going to come over twice, I'm going to pull it tight and then I'll tie it again. I'm going to come back underneath, I'm going to come down just a few inches, come through and just pull it tight again. And the roast starts to take form. We just keep doing this until we're all the way down to the end. I'm gonna cut the tips. By the way, you guys see I got a new knife? This is a, a bony knife, part of Dahlstrong's Valhalla series. It's my first Valhalla knife and uh, boy, it is beautiful. All right, to get this thing seasoned, we're gonna start with a pretty basic flavor profile with salt and pepper. And for a binder, I'm using this uh, Wagyu beef tallow. So we're gonna salt it. Our ratio here is one teaspoon per pound. This is about a 23 pound prime rib. So I'm using a half a cup of Morton's kosher salt. Again, we want the sides. We want the top and bottom. Give it a little, little salt bay. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> now it's time for pepper. You guys have seen this on the show if you've watched before. This is the pepper cannon from Man Kitchen. This is a great time to show the power of this thing because I can adjust the size of the cracked pepper and it's actually gonna crack good thick pepper about as fast as you can reasonably go. Now, I'm gonna just fill up the front of my board here, come all the way around here with pepper and just soak it up. Got to get the sides. All right, this is a well-seasoned roast. Time to start the fire. I'll meet you at the grill. I've got the grill set up with two fires. I've got one fire that's actually in the main cooking chamber set against the back so I can have indirect heat. And then I've got another fire over in the Bracera, which is an area that allow me to burn wood and make coal that I can move in under the roast as the roast cooks. Say hello to my little friend. You guys gotta get one of these. All right, time to get stuck. So we're gonna put this massive skewer through the middle of this prime rib. So I'll start by putting one of the forks on here. I'm just gonna run it all the way over to the other side. So notice it's thicker over here on the chuck side than it is the loin side. So that I can keep it centered, I wanna come in from the smaller side and then try my best to keep it as centered as I can. Look at that dead center. I five myself and I'll put this other fork on this side and we're just going to put this right into the meat. Let's get it on the grill. All right. So I'm going to load the spit right here and attach it to the motor. You notice I've got the fire running in the back. I want to have indirect heat, but I still don't want anything blocking it. I'm not smoking this. I'm grilling it. So once we've got this turning and we see what the temperatures look like, I'll be able to move those coals closer or further away. And you notice I've also got some wood here lined up underneath and that wood has two purposes. So first of all, the heat from here is gonna dry this out, make it light faster. You see this one back here, still a little bit wet wood. We're still getting a little dirty smoke, which is fine, right? That's not gonna be a problem at this stage of the cook but also all the fat is gonna drip onto the wood. And then as we move that wood with the fat on, that fat's gonna burn and create just incredible flavor. Now we wanna keep track of the temperature of the cook. And so I'm using these meter probes and I'm gonna put one in, I'm coming in from the side because I really wanna to get to the center of the meat. So now with this meter app, I'm just gonna set up a cook for each of these. So I'll do set up cook, I'm doing beef, I'm doing a roast. It looks down here and you can see a rib roast. That's what we're making. We want it medium rare. 
right, which is going to finish at 135 degrees. That's a little warmer than I want it. Let's set it to rare and we can control the temperature a little better. All right, and now I can watch this cook unfold. I can see the temperatures. And as you can see here, it looks like the ambient temperature, which is this green number, is a little cooler than I want. I want this up at that 225 or 250 degrees. So I'm gonna move the coals a little bit closer to the meat until I'm getting the readings that I want. And we're gonna watch this, the meat temperature. And as it gets closer, we're gonna start to baste. You guys are gonna really like that. Okay, according to the meter app, we are getting really close and probably even done here. We're looking for that 120-ish degrees at the center and right there. Okay, so we've got rare in the middle. We're gonna have medium rare on the outside as this continues cooking. Boy, that butter is having an impact on the fire. It's gonna be fun getting this off of here. Cheers. Cheers. That's awesome. You think I did good, Chief Griddle? Yeah, I'm ready for a plate. All right, Have what do you think? How'd I do? Amazing. Watch this video next, where the police chief, fire chief, and I serve this prime rib to the police and fire departments. And if you've already seen that one, check this one out, where I made this prime rib on the big stick burner.